Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at IX Web Hosting. Click the banner on the right left chronicles.com to get up to 40% off your first year of the best hosting on the planet. Today's episode of Dueling Dialogue is brought to you by Saucy Eva. Gma's marinade is coming soon to a plate near you to gourmetize your meats and proteins. Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 94. I'm Connor Murphy here with Grace Matthews in Springfield, Missouri. Hi, Grace. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? Doing really good. You know, loving this summer weather. You know, it was a long winter. It was a very long winter. I am very happy to see the sunshine. Yeah, me too. Me too. We got a lot to talk about today, don't we? We sure do. A lot's going on. You bet. In fact, I I guess the biggest news of the day, as we hit the one-year anniversary today for the Mueller special counsel investigation. Wow. A year. Mueller, a year. Holy. A year. Now, you got to remember that almost a year prior to that was the investigation. Right. Today's just the anniversary of the special counsel being named to, you know, look into all the bad stuff they found in the investigation. Now, we've been, still, two years out, we don't know what the bad stuff was. Right. Nevertheless, Mueller said he will not indict the president. And in fact, he cannot indict. Now, the cannot indict is kind of dicey because that's really not a law. However, it would be frowned upon to indict a president because the forefathers said that the nation's business is so important that there is nothing that you would indict the president for that couldn't wait till after he was out of office. Right. That pulling his attention away could only make the nation and its people suffer. Yeah, especially for something that they know is all fabricated now. Exactly. I mean, what is it, you know? And Rudy Giuliani, who is now one of the president's attorneys, he may challenge the legitimacy of the entire case. Now, this is on the heels of us learning that there was a spy planted among the Trump team. Right. And I will tell you, there's a lot of people out there saying they already know who that was. Uh They have not really that name, but it will not stay hidden. I assure you by next week, we will know who that was. Still, was the spy being planted within the team really entrapment? In other words, how did the spy behave? Did he say, I got some Russians over here, guys, who will help fix the election? Do you want to go along? I mean, you know, was he there trying to set up the people or was he there just observing? Yeah, good question. Really good question. Either way, he shouldn't have been there. But I, I think that's what the thought pattern is. Was he there to entrap? Was the Trump derangement syndrome so bad, even before the election, that they would actually put someone in there to entrap the president or some of his people. This is so beyond Watergate. It I, I can't even oh wrap my, my head around this. Watergate was just a bunch of idiots taking, stealing information that wasn't even that interesting. Yeah, through one little bug. Yeah, you know? exactly. You know, I mean, Watergate today, well, first of all, none of that would be that secret because there's no, you know, everything's transparent. We have the internet now. So, you know, I would imagine that had that happened today, Nixon would have finished out his term. Yeah, I think you're right. So. Especially with the buffoons you guys got in the FBI, you know. I, exactly. Uh, some heads got to roll over this. This is just ridiculous that, that they went ahead and did this. I mean. And the, you got to remember that this is like the mind. management. This is the upper people in yeah. the FBI. Certainly not the lower people. They're working their butts off. I can you know? imagine how broken it, it is right through the whole organization now. You know, it, it's broken on every level. Yeah, it is broke. You know, it is broken. And I heard some the other night that we haven't talked about, hadn't even thought about. And that is, did Mueller give Comey immunity at the start of this whole situation? 
Huh. It would explain a lot. And it would explain the fact that he can run around saying stuff that and and contradicting himself if he already had immunity. Wow, that makes Just a lot a of thought. sense. It makes a, a It a does ton make of a sense. lot of sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Nevertheless, Republican congressional members want to know what was the counterintelligence behind this whole special counsel. Yeah, and they have every right to know and so do the American people. I don't even think that they'll ever get an answer to that. Well, they got to dig and find one because this yeah, is they do. This is so wrong on so many levels. This is just crazy. It is, and it, it, it's hurting the nation, and, and it's further dividing us all, you know, and we don't need any more division. No. I mean, you've got religious division. You've got race division. You've got political division. I mean, there's division. There's male-female issues right now, and I, I just don't know how you could have any more division and why you would want to be responsible for contributing any new decisive issues. Yeah. You know, I mean, I thought these people in Washington would at least try, even if they failed, but try to do things for the nation. You know, it's, yeah, yeah each of one themselves. of them, yeah. yeah, is doing it. It's it's like it's all about him or her. Yeah. And uh, it, it's just wrong. Speaking of all about him, Kim Jong-un is running around in his pantsuit designed by Hillary Taylor asking, <laughs> what's happening? What's happening? Yeah, he's not happy lately, is he? No, he's threatened to cancel that June 12th meeting with the president. Wow. Um, that summit is supposed to take place in Singapore. But Kim is angry. He's crying that he he's mad that South Korea and the U.S. are having their war games. I call mm-hmm. them war games. They're really they they're really drills right. for you know. And it may not be all about Kim. He thinks it's all about him. Maybe it's about China or Japan. Yeah, or, I, know, I I I think whatever. it's more like China doesn't want you guys anywhere near there. So yeah, I mean it could be whatever. Yeah. But he thinks it's all about him. He also mentioned that John Bolton, who was on some Sunday shows or over the weekend and made a comparison in the 80s during the Reagan administration we denuclearized Libya and we took their nukes and transported them to the US to be I don't know what we did with them you know I don't know if we destroyed them or locked them up I don't know what we did nevertheless at the that whole situation ended with Gaddafi dead in the middle of the square yeah. so Kim thought or thinks that that's what what Bolton was talking about. Okay. Um, which maybe in a sort of Freudian way he was. But overtly, I think he was talking about what are we going to do with these nukes? We need to remove them from North Korea so we know they're not there. Right. Um, I think that's what that's about. Do we put them on a boat and bring them home? Do we destroy them there? I don't think we want to just take Kim Jong-un's word for it. Maybe he's out. Maybe he doesn't have any. He doesn't want you guys to know that. Yeah. I think that is, is yeah. part of it. I think that his, what would you call it, his laboratory, his nuke site collapsed. Yeah, it's done. Yeah, and I think that's about all he had. I mean, they haven't had much money for a long time. Yeah. So. And um, building nukes costs money because you've got, and you've got to pay for it because they don't just have all the resources sent around North Korea. Yeah. It know. will be interesting. My guess is he will show up to that summit. Um, he's playing a game because we know that Kim Jong-un likes to play games. Well, sounds like China influence there. He just met with them too, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah. You're exactly right. So I, I think it, they, you know, the finger points at China on that one. He could be posturing too for his people. Like I'm a big tough boy. You oh, know? could be. On his chest, you know, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, like, it, it you definitely know, I, could I be. can stand up to Trump and America and China. I'm, you know, and, and that could be for his people, you know. Right. Yeah, so, it could be. Okay, represent Representative Steiny Hoyer, the Democrat from Maryland, he's also the second ranking House Democratic leader. He says he's ready to fund the wall. Oh. He's ready to give Trump the money. And he, in exchange, he wants to save these DACA kids. He wants to ensure a path to citizenship for these, we call them kids, they're not 
not good anymore. But, you know, and I think that's a good thing. He doesn't want the wall. He doesn't think the wall will work. But what he does want is to save those is, kids. Yeah. 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 And I do think those kids should be saved. That, you know, the fact that their parents brought them over here is much different than them coming over here illegally. Yeah. These children have not broken the law. Their parents did. Yeah. I definitely see, uh, you know, that something needs to be done. Definitely. I'm, I'm absolutely. glad it's moving forward because we've been talking about DACA for a year already. Oh, so. absolutely. You know, we've just had our year anniversary and that's one of the very first things we wrote about. Right. Was DACA. So it has been an issue for a very long time. DHS says that most of the illegals hovering at the border between Tijuana and San Diego, they don't even qualify for entry into the United States. They right. just don't fit the criteria. That's very similar to what's happening on Roxham Road between New York and Quebec, is those people would not be allowed in the country if they went to a legal border crossing. Yet we're supposed to turn them away, and we're not. So I have no idea. I mean, the media has been kind of uh, silenced on the whole thing, and nobody will give the media information. Most of the media reports come from the New York side. So... Who knows how many illegal immigrants have crossed the border? I mean, there, someone was, was saying 400 a day, and this has been happening almost a year now. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot. Yeah. Scary. That is a, it is very scary. And, you know, I mean, resources are finite for any nation. Yeah. And the, this stretches the ability to take care of these illegals and the country's citizens. So yeah. I, I think it's scary. Well, on the other side of the coin, it's hard to take this seriously. Michael Avenatti, who is Stormy Daniels' lawyer, has made 147 TV appearances since March 7th. All on CNN. <laughs> Most of them on CNN and the rest on MSNBC. 74 of them have been on CNN in just the past 10 weeks. So wow. he's averaging appearing pretty much every day on CNN. Uh, got an agenda, CNN? Wow. And this guy, he owes taxes. He has He's being accused of running off with clients' money. He apparently owes everybody and his brother wow. or sister. And the California State Bar is investigating him <laughs> for fraudulent behavior. Uh, okay. Hey, tells you what kind so, of guy he is. Well, you know, he's not doing much for Stormy. No. In fact, I think he may have got her in more trouble. As this thing pays out, and she was paid to keep secrets, and she agreed to that and signed the paper, and he told her to go ahead and talk. She did. Eventually, she's going to pay. Yeah, I think uh, once uh, Trump is out of office, uh, she's going to have a knock at her door. Absolutely. And Michael Avenatti is going to be nowhere to be found. <laughs> yeah. He'll be behind his own bars by then. Exactly. Well, Trump is working to lower drug prices. And on the surface, that sounds great. But does it defy his platform of capitalism? Mm. Now, we know that people in the United States pay more for drugs than, for example, you all do in Canada. Oh, a there. lot more. Some of our people, some of the more expensive drugs especially, they will try to get them from Canada. Yeah, there's a big um, business there. So I understand this, but it defies letting the market work out itself. Yeah. I. You know what? Where do you draw the line? The capitalism know. line. You know, know. Where, where you say, okay, this this is fine that you're capitalizing on this, that you have this drug and the people want, but you're paying uh, or you're charging citizens in the U.S. $100 more a pill. That yeah. makes that that's just so wrong on all levels. And you're just doing it because you can. Yeah. And you want the money, not for not because your expenses have gone up or because it's more expensive to do business in the U.S. You're just doing it because you can't. Exactly. Yeah. I, I agree, but I, I don't know how this will be accepted, especially within the conservative Republican Party. I, I don't know how they're going to feel about this. Well, I, I, I like the idea of him fighting that fight because yeah. it, it just breaks my heart to know that there's people that can't afford their own medication out there. Yeah, and it, you're right. I mean, it could cause death, too. Yeah, there's something called the right to life and think that capitalism sometimes or a lot of times interferes with that. So I just feel it's so wrong. I think they should have a set price. Everybody in the world pays that same price. 
interesting fact. Let's set the price for yeah. the world. For the world. Okay. Okay. Well, the city of Boulder is taking some matters in its own hands. The city council voted to ban AR-15s. The law takes effect June 15th of this year. It will be illegal to possess, sell, or transfer semi-automatic firearms in their city. Now, I don't care how you feel about guns. To me, this is not about guns as much as it is about a city taking it within themselves and what they feel is their right to go against a federal the Constitution of the United States. Right. The Second Amendment. I think that's dangerous. Someone will for sure take this to the Supreme Court. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's not going to hold any water once it hits a court. But it is interesting. And what are they going to do? Set up little booths that they check your car for AR-15s before you drive into Boulder? Yeah. I mean, what are they going to do? How are they going to enforce this? You know, and what if some, and what if people already have it? Where are you supposed to turn it in at? Yeah. And what uh, are they going to do with them? You know? <laughs> Good question. Uh, that would be yeah. scary to know. So. Sell, sell them to Utah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, An overreach. You know, that that could be a platform for socialism eventually, <laughs> like yeah. I said, precedents. And speaking of socialism, a lot of people said, oh, it will never come to the United States. Well, Tuesday in Pennsylvania, four socialists won seats in the House Legislature, the state legislation. Wow. And and China's socialist, right? Yeah, in fact, some people say communist. Yeah, well, I, I always thought they were communist, basically, yeah. because yeah. They, they, they're more, they seem more communistic than, you know. You they would. are. They are. But they're still uh -huh. socialist. So these exactly. people, these people want to be like China, okay. Or Russia. Or Russia, yeah. Or worse yet, Venezuela, hmm. where every 17 days, prices have doubled. Right. Uh, their, yep. their government has collapsed. Their money has collapsed. They're going to start using officially United States currency. It, it's, it's terrible there. People are fighting. They're dying. They're starving. They don't have medicine. I mean, they can't even get toilet paper. Now, that's bad. That's gross. Yeah. So I can't imagine why anybody wants to be like them. Hmm. And the reason they got in this situation is they were giving away too much. And they spent all, of, you know, they collected the taxes and gave away too much. And, you know, once in a while, when you are spending other people's money, it, eventually it runs out. Yeah. You know, resources, again, I say it again, I said it all ago, are finite. You know, yeah. they're, they're not infinite. Well, it didn't work out too well for Venezuela, that's for sure. No, yeah. That's in scary. In fact, we're probably, a lot of the illegals coming to the United States and Canada are from Venezuela. Yeah, could be, could be. Yeah because they are in total collapse. Uh, the Royal Wedding will take place this weekend. Oh, coming uh, up. I thought it was already, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Well, Prince Harry will be marrying American Meghan Markle. Now, bless her heart. Her family, are just, they're not doing her any favors. Oh, I haven't heard this. Oh, boy. Her brother got arrested for holding a gun to his girlfriend's head. That's pretty serious. Wow. And it's very, it's frowned upon in most places in the world. Most places, yeah. Her dad, I guess, wanted to make some money off of his daughter's impending nuptials. And he staged some photos and sold it to, I don't know, to the paparazzi for $100,000. Oh. He got in some sort of situation with her brother. I, I, I don't know exactly what the situation was. I hope it wasn't with a gun. And he had a heart attack. Oh. So he will not be going to the wedding. My guess is the brother's not invited either and probably not the sister who's also writing a book about how difficult Megan is. I heard that her dad was pissed off that this marriage was going to take place because she was marrying a guy on government assistance. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of government assistance, I'll tell you there. Yeah. Wow, what a mess. Yeah, well, I guess her mother is the only family member going, and it sounds like she will walk her down the aisle and give her away at the well, wedding. Kind of sounds like she's the only sane one in the family. Oh, yeah. And the, the wedding's going to cost $85 million. You got to be kidding me. $7 million of that is for security. How ridiculous. The flowers alone were... 
I think it was something like 140,000. What the? Yeah, yeah, he's way down the line now. He's like number six to the throne. You know, now that um, Prince William's children have been born, he's way down there. Wow. Of course, that's where I'd want to be. I wouldn't want to be the exact royalty. I just want all the benefits. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want to have to behave that well. Yeah. So lots going on in Canada. Yeah, tell us well. about Canada. Well, we still got the pipeline war, Alberta fighting for their Keystone Pipeline to go through to the BC coast and BC saying, no, you're not going to screw up our environment with your pipeline. So Trudeau just announced, or Turdo, sorry, just announced <laughs> uh, that the government, the federal government will give Keystone Pipeline investors basically a blank check. So if they lose money because of the protests and stuff, they'll just give them the cash. So. Well, I until Trudeau was elected, I had no idea you guys were so rich up there. Oh, we got tons of resources. Oh Way more goodness. resources than people. Oh, yeah. You know, this is one of the reasons why I think Trump said that Canada's tough is because we got the shit. Yeah, apparently. You know, so, yeah, well, we're going to be Trudeau's tough. spending it like it's water. Well, the government watchdog, the auditor, um, wants to know where $2.5 billion out of the infrastructure budget went. And the liberal government can't seem to find it. It just, Oops. yeah, just got displaced. Two point five billion dollars. I guess that's just like you, you and me losing twenty. Yeah. Yeah, so... They don't know, seem too concerned, do they? No, they, uh, you know, just shrugged it off. They've they've got a majority government and pff, nothing's going to happen to them. Somewhat like, uh, you know, I guess the Clinton legacy. So, yeah, they, it's gotten ugly. Alberta's threatening now. They've just passed a law yesterday where they're going to cut off oil and gas to BC. They're shutting off the taps. Well, what did you guys do wrong? You're getting locked in your room? Well, they want their pipeline built and we won't let them build. It. Oh. So they. So they're said, just gonna. They say you're gonna do without gas. Yeah, I mean we're already paying the highest price for for gas and oil in North America, and. Yeah, maybe the world. Uh, possibly. Yeah, who knows? How much uh, is it this week? Uh, it's it's just went up a couple cents the other day. Of course, the weekend's coming, and they always oh, do yeah. that out here because they know people are filling their RVs up. So yeah. it's uh, you know, license to steal, definitely. Who could afford an RV? There. Yeah, true that. I mean, you now. can afford the gas. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, where I where I live, we're paying two twenty nine. I paid two twenty nine yesterday for yeah. a gallon. Wow, I wish. Um, Washington's making a killing because Canadians are driving across the border and filling up all their vehicles and jerry cans and everything. So, That's what I would do. Also, in Vancouver, thieves have started to drill out bottoms of gas tanks and parking lots and drain people's fuel. Gosh. It's just cheaper to buy beer now than it is gas. So, <laughs> Too bad your car doesn't run on beer. Yeah, I, you know. Well, I guess if you're drinking beer, you shouldn't be driving anywhere anyway. So, That's you true. know, I'm investing in beer. Screw gas. I'm investing in beer. Yeah. So I agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't always agree, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. But life's a journey and we're all in this together. Remember, do not become anyone's victim. Thanks for listening. Godspeed, Connor, and Godspeed to all of our friends out there. Godspeed, Grace, and thanks for listening. Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at IX Web Hosting. Click the banner on the right left chronicles.com to get up to 40% off your first year of the best hosting on the planet. Today's episode of Dueling Dialogue is brought to you by Saucy Eva. Gma's marinade is coming soon to a plate near you to gourmetize your meats and proteins.